So here's a built-in design on the Altair. Pretty, isn't it? So I stitched it on my scarf. You know what's really amazing about it? That's the back side. That's the front side. On a scarf, you really kind of need to see both sides. So let's explore two-sided embroidery. We can do some embroidery on a scarf because baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> I'm Kathy, and this is Sewing Deck Doc. So for two-sided embroidery, we just have a few things to consider. And uh, I'm going to go through with some of the supplies that I'm using and some of the ways you might approach this. Um, so I did do my embroidery on a, on a pashmina scarf. And you can get pashminas in all kinds of qualities. You can get them with, um, with uh, you can get wool ones, you can get rayon ones, you can get some very inexpensive ones. They would make a great gift. Or you could make your own. You could totally make a scarf out of whatever soft fabric that you have. Uh, polar fleece would work great. So whatever you, ha however you access your scarf, this is just a scarf where we can going to see both sides of the embroidery. So that's number one. Decide what kind of scarf that you're going to want. One thing to take into mind when we're doing this is we're going to be using stabilizer, of course, because we're doing an embroidery. And the embroidery stabilizer to, does need to be removed. We're going to use a, a wet and gone uh, stabilizer. I use Floriani wet and gone tacky. You could also use just the regular wet and gone because this stabilizer, it'll stabilize the embroidery, but when you, when you soak it in water, and I have instructions in the handout to talk you through that. And of course, all of the stabilizer has instructions and even videos from the company to show you how to do that. We're going to need to remove the stabilizer because, you know, stabilizer would kind of ruin the two-sided effect. So the, the scarf does need to be able to be immersed in water and not uh, have that affect it too bad. And so keep in mind, if you're using like a cotton or a rayon, if it's going to shrink, if it's going to bleed, uh, keep that in mind when you're, when you're determining what kind of scarf that you're going to do. And then, of course, we're going to need thread. Now, there's two approaches to doing a, a reversible embroidery. This embroidery on this scarf I did, what I did is I, for every color change, I changed the bobbin thread to be the, the matching embroidery thread that I used. We're going to talk about adjusting the machine to, to accept that embroidery thread as a bobbin in just a little bit. We'll talk about embroidery tension. Uh, but there's other ways that you could do it. Uh, basically, embroidery thread, standard embroidery thread, comes in either black or white. And say I was doing a scarf and I was doing a snowflakes in white all on the bottom of it, and I used a white embroidery bobbin thread, well, I probably wouldn't have much of a problem, would I? It wouldn't look bad front or back. I used my wash away stabilizer. It would probably look pretty good. If I was doing a black design, say on a white scarf, and I used my black embroidery bobbin thread, well, that would probably look okay too. It wouldn't look so bad on the front and the back. The back might not be as pretty as the front, but you could get away with it. Now, are there other ways that you can access an embroidery bobbin thread that might be a different color? Well, there are. You can get a very thin thread to use as a bobbin thread. Now, you may need to adjust your machine. We're going to talk about that. We're using the Baby Lock Altair today. But this would work for other brother and baby lock machines. And probably whatever embroidery machine you own, you can access some sort of tension adjustment. But we're going to be specific on the Baby Lock Altair today. So this is Quilter Select Para Cotton Poly. And it is an 80 weight thread. Now, your embroidery bobbin thread, it's typically around a 60 weight thread, but this is a very fine thread, and you can kind of get away with using it as a embroidery bobbin thread. And why do I bring that up? Well, it comes in a whole bunch of colors. So if I use this as the bobbin thread, and I was using a spring green embroidery <laughs> thread on the top, well, it would probably look pretty good on the back. Wouldn't necessarily be totally reversible, but it wouldn't have the effect of having, having the back look different. So let me give you a visual about what a traditional embroidery looks like. So here's an embroidery I, I did on a garment. And I hope you can see that here's that white embroidery thread on the back. Now, you can see that it's white. Here, the embroidery thread's coming to the back. And that's what an embroidery is supposed to do. 
The embroidery is supposed to come to the back and it's supposed to be an unbalanced, uneven stitch. Why? Because you don't want that bobbin thread to pop up to the top. That would kind of spoil your embroidery. So embroideries are designed to have that top thread come to the back just a little. Well, that kind of ruins the effect of a two-sided embroidery. So if we want to do a two-sided embroidery, we're probably going to need to balance our tension in embroidery, which is something that machines not set up or designed to do when it comes out for the factory and we're doing our traditional embroideries. Now we can totally do that and if we're changing the tension just a little bit but we're not going to change the tension on our machine for regular sewing and regular embroidery. So how do we accomplish that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to do a test. And let me show you how I set up for a test. Now, here is basic embroidery bobbin thread. Here's that 80 weight, like I said. But if we're doing an embroidery and we want it to be truly two-sided, we're going to need an a bobbin wound with the embroidery thread that we're using on the top to use on the back. Because we're going to try to get this to look the same on the front and the back. So for every color in your design, you're going to need a bobbin wound with that thread. Now one thing, the reason I'm using the Baby Lock Altair today is because it has two features that I'm really going to use when I'm doing my two-sided embroidery. First of all, we're going to get to that in a little bit, I'm going to do embroidery on a scarf. And this fabric, well this is a wool pashmina, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, and it's a very light fabric. And I think that's great for a scarf, but it's a very light fabric. So I really, really, really don't want a super dense design because it would change the hand of the fabric. I want it to be soft and flowy, and I even want my design to be soft and flowy as well. So I'm going to need to change the density or have a very low density design. So we're going to do that in the machine, and the Baby Lock Altair will do that. We'll reduce the design, and I'm going to show you that on the screen. But one thing I also have on the Baby Lock Destiny that <laughs> the Altair, what am I saying to Destiny? On the Baby Lock Altair, I have an extra bobbin case that came with the machine. It's an alternate bobbin case that I can adjust the tension on. Now, if your machine didn't come with an alternate bobbin case, you can totally get one. And it's great if you're using pre-wound bobbins or doing any kind of specialty embroidery or sewing to have have a bobbin case that you can adjust and not adjust your standard one that's set either at the factory or by a, by a registered technician when they do the service on your machine. So let me show you what that looks like. So here is the alternate bobbin case and let me take out the standard bobbin case and show you how that works. Here is the, where the bobbin case lives, obviously. And I'm going to take off this plastic cover, but I'm going to tell the machine that I don't want you to necessarily move the needle up and down. So I have a feature on the screen of the machine where I can tell the machine I'm going to be doing some work, so please gray out all the buttons so I don't accidentally have the needle come down <laughs> and go through my finger when I'm down there working. Check. So now I'm going to remove the bobbin case cover and the machine made a noise and told me, well, you know, you took off the bobbin case cover. It's not a good time to sew. This just pops right off and pops right back on again. Now, here's my standard bobbin case and it just lifts out. Now, this is the procedure you would do when you're cleaning your bobbin case area anyway. So if you haven't done this, you might want to get in there and do a little clean out because it needs it every once in a while. But let me show you the difference. Here's the standard and what it has is on the screw, this is the tension adjustment screw. This is the tension where the thread goes through. It has a little tiny bit of green paint. And that green paint is supposed to remind you that this is the adjustment screw, but you really shouldn't do any adjustments on this bobbin case because it is set not only for embroidery, but for standard sewing with standard thread. So we have this one. We're not going to mess with it. We're going to use the alternate bobbin case 
which you can identify because it has a little purple, kind of bluey purple dot in the center and no paint on the screw. So this one can be adjusted and it's only a minor adjustment that's needed. But how do you know how much to adjust it? Well, let's do a quick test and let me show you how I do that. So I'm going to put the standard bobbin case aside. I'm going to put the alternate bobbin case into the machine. Replace the bobbin case cover. Yeah, you want to make sure it's nice and flat when you put it in there. This back on. Now when we go back to regular sewing, I'm just going to remember to change that bobbin case back out. And I can take this one in and out easily to adjust it if I need to. But let me show you how I did a test to see if I could get my embroidery to look just as good on the back as it does on the front. So I did a series of bars and this is really just the letter I turned on its side. And let me show you the back. So here's the back of the embroidery. And remember how I said the embroidery was an uneven balanced stitch? Well, you can see that white bobbin thread coming all the way through there. So I kind of don't want that. So I replaced that with my regular thread and it came out a little bit better. But I adjusted my bobbin case to have a little bit more of that thread on the back. And how do you do that? You take a little tiny screwdriver that came with your machine and on that bobbin case, you're just going to take that one screw. Well, let me show you again because it's super easy to take it out. There's the one little screw that adjusts the tension. This little screw holds the bobbin case together. <laughs> Don't mess with that. But I take my little screwdriver and I'm sure you remember the phrase righty tighty, lefty loosey. If I needed to tighten my tension on my bobbin, I could turn that screw to the right. If I want to loosen it, which I do, don't I? I'm going to take the screw and I'm going to move it a little bit to the left. Now, how far do you adjust it? Well, that depends on your thread in your machine. But if you imagine that little screw as a clock, you're only going to adjust it about five or 10 minutes at a time. It's a very small little adjustment. Adjust it, test it, see how it works. Let me show you how I brought up those letter I's to have a test to use in my machine. Now I've already adjusted my bobbin case, so I'm just going to put it back in the machine. Remember, you're going to be adjusting yours and you know it's the alternate because it has that little blue dot in the center. Put it in, make sure it's flat, put the bobbin cover on, Here's my thread. It's my embroidery thread that's going to match the first color of my design. It's going to drop it in just like I do any other embroidery. Except I have a really pretty thread in there now. So now let me show you how I brought up those letter I's to do a test. So I'm going to unrelease because I fixed my bobbin. We'll come back home. Okay. In embroidery, you go to the fonts, pick a basic font. There's that letter I set. Well, I'm going to turn it on its side or it doesn't matter. You can do it any way you want, but this works for me. And I'm going to use my border feature to repeat the design to get a whole bunch of those letter I's, spread them apart. And then that's good what I'm going to use for my test. Now, when I stitch out my test, I made notes and I used my little pen to make notes after I did each little test, just to make sure I remembered exactly what worked. Because you can also, besides adjusting the tension on the bobbin, you can also adjust the tension on the top, on your top thread. And you might need to do both. So let me show you how that works. Now, if I'm adjusting the tension on any one of these different bars as I stitch them out, I have two places in the machine to adjust that. So I'm going to go to embroidery and down here in the bottom, if I'm going to adjust the tension on the top thread, I might want to loosen it, right? So if I come down here to the little scissors and the little thing that looks like a stitch, 
there's the embroidery tension right there. And I can take that and I can reduce that tension on that top thread. Once again, when I do my sample, I stitch it out, I'm going to make a note of how I change that. In case I want to come back later, because this adjustment doesn't stay when you go to another embroidery. It's, it's just for that one particular embroidery that you're using. Now, what if I, what if I'm doing a whole bunch of different designs and I want them to be two-sided? I can go into the settings and change the universal embroidery tension and loosen it just a little bit as well. Now remember, when you do that, if you do it in settings, that stays. So you want to remember to change it back, just like you're going to remember to put your standard bobbin case back in. So let me show you where that setting is. Up in the settings, I can come to embroidery tension and I can loosen that top tension or tighten it up however I need to. If I'm pulling up to the top, I think I need to make it a little bit tighter, don't I? Not loosen. So I need to loosen the bottom, tighten the top. Well, it's kind of a tug of war and you're going to find out what exactly works for you. I kind of came to where I found that at the very end, I really liked what it looked like. And when I stitched out my scarf, it worked out really well. So, let me set that back to where I was. I had a plus six on my embroidery tension on the top. On my settings down here, I had increased that top. I think I went up to, yep, I went to six on that as well. Remember, your settings are going to be a little bit different. Now, I also told you that when I'm doing my embroidery on my scarf, I wanted to this is a little bit reduce the density of this design and the baby lock all tear it actually does that great so let me show you let me bring up that design and show you how that works so i'm going to come back to return remember i've already done my test okay now let's see i think i put that design in the memory of the machine so i could easily come back to it there it is set now in the Baby Lock Altair, I can adjust the size. I can blow up a design up to 200% and I can keep the density or I can change the density. The density is the number of stitches, the time the machine stitches. And the more dense a design, the more stiff it is and it would kind of change the feel of my little scarf. So let me show you how I would change the density of this design. Now remember, when you're changing that, you're taking away stitches and the design may not look exactly like it would the way the designer, the digitizer planned it. I'm okay on my scarf doing that. But remember, whenever you change the density, you're kind of changing the design just a little bit and it won't be as, it won't be as filled in and robust. That's what we want, but maybe not on any other design. So let me show you how to do that. See on this design, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to edit and I think I've already changed it. So let me reset that back to just regular and I'll show you how I access that. So there's my design and I want to increase my size of my design, but I also want to change the density too. So to tell the machine to recalculate stitches, I touch this and it's always going to change it back to the way the design came out of the machine or the design pack. I want to recalculate my stitches. So I want to make this design pretty big. I want to make an impact on my scarf. So I really increase the size of my design. Okay, but I also want to change the density. So when I touch density, I can change. Let me show you where that key is. That key's right here. That key's not active unless you've told the machine you want to recalculate stitches. So when I touch density, I can take that design down to, I'm going to go down to the maximum, which is 80%. And it really stitched out pretty, but it's really soft. So now all I need to do is take my scarf, put it on my hoop, I'm using the wet and gone tacky. You put it in your hoop, you peel it away, and the scarf's going to stick on there. Now I really need to do that on a flat surface. So I'm going to go 
hoop up the other end of my scarf. When we come back, we'll get started doing that first color, which is gold. And remember, I have a matching gold bobbin. There's a couple other things I want to tell you to get a really good looking design on the back and the front. So I'm hooped up and ready to go. I have my design. I've lowered the density. I have the first color, top, bottom, matching thread. Most importantly, I did my little test with my little letter I, and I know I have my machine set for the settings that are giving me the best results on the back as I am on the front. One other thing I'm going to do is when I do my embroidery, I know that my machine will clip jump stitches, but when it does, sometimes it leaves a little knot and a little thread tail on the back. That would kind of ruin the effect. So let's turn that function off, and what we're going to do is we're going to come in and manually trim those jump stitches or the end of color trim on our own. Now, um, I have this in the handout and it goes through this whole process, so if you missed a step, don't worry, we'll come back in, go back, read the handout, and, and it takes you through all the steps. So let's turn those off. So now in embroidery, I'm going to go back where I did adjust the tension earlier. And I don't want the, the sheen to trim. Make sure I have this set at what I need to set it at, because I wrote that down. That's good. The dark, the blue indicates that that's a function that's going to go but I don't want that. So I've turned off my trims on both the end of the color and within the design, it won't do any trimming. And I'm going to come back and do this a little bit later. Now, when I do my first color, my first stitch, I want to pull that thread up as well because I don't want a little thread tail on the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the plus and minus key and I'm going to advance to the very first stitch. Now I'm going to do needle down and needle up pull that bobbin thread up, which is my matching embroidery thread, and hold that to the side. So let me get my thread here. Go needle down, needle up, raise the presser foot, and it's going to pull up that bobbin thread. And I can pull that off to the side and I can hold that for the very first couple stitches. And I won't have that thread tail on the back. Now when I do that for the next colors, I'm going to do the same thing as well. And when I finish doing it, I'm going to come in and manually trim my, my, I'm going to manually trim my threads. So are you ready? Let's do some two-sided embroidery. Trim your threads after the first couple stitches, but don't trim your working thread. Ask me how I know. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I finished the embroidery. Pretty, huh? Now the back? Not as pretty until we take the stabilizer off. So what you're going to do on the back is peel this away from the stabilizer, remove as much stabilizer as you can, and then you really need to soak it in warm, not hot, not cold water for at least overnight. It takes a while for this to dissipate. So this is not a project where you do the scarf and go to dinner that night. You need to really take out that, that the wash away stabilizer. Now, remember I also said our machine, we're not going to hurt it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out that bobbin case. Replace it with the original. And the only thing else we need to do is we need to go into the settings.
go into the settings and take that embroidery tension back to like nothing had ever happened. Thanks for staying with me the whole time. In your handout, I have a quick instruction on how to do an infinity scarf if you're not into embroidering all your scarf. I'm going to send it off to George. Thanks for watching me today. And two-sided embroidery, just a couple things to think about, but it's really kind of fun. Thanks, Kathy. As usual, that was an incredible presentation. The Babylock Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine in the industry. It has a large 9.5 by 14 inch embroidery area, plus 494 built in beautiful designs, 30 of the most amazing fonts that you can arc and ray and edit, plus many large beautiful monograms. You have the ability to create a design without a computer with the IQ designer. You can take an image from a phone, send it to a machine, and it turns into beautiful embroidery instantly. You also have an automatic applique creator to create great borders around names and, and other embroidery designs. Plus, of course, we love our never miss needle threader, and it also cuts all the jump stitches that you want. Now, it's not just for embroidery. This is an incredible machine with 11.25 inch opening. It also has a uh, automatic fabric sensor. This fabric sensor senses heavy fabric like denim and sews automatically from there. It will also sew on lighter fabric like Trico. It will sew elastic. It's incredible. Now, for the diff real difficult fabric and for quilting, it has a digital dual feed with a belt system that controls all fabrics perfectly. It also has a laser guide, so you can guide for that perfect seam allowance. It's incredible. As I mentioned, this is dollar for dollar, the most advanced machine in the industry. We have a special package right now. The total package value is $14,999, but we have it on sale for $8,999. We're offering free shipping across the country, as well as we have interest-free payments of under $188 a month. But that's not all. We have a special bonus for a limited time. And while supplies last, we're including 63 spools of beautiful embroidery thread, two separate design collections by Anita Good Design, which has over 600 design files in all different styles. We're including stabilizer, all kinds of needles, bobbins, and a membership to love of knowledge. We're here, you're gonna see all kinds of demonstrations and techniques on the Baby Lock Altair and other sewing techniques. This is for a limited time, but I also mentioned we have interest rate payments. Now, for those who don't wanna finance, we have even a better bonus. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 or click on the link to order today. Bye for now.